the capacitance attenuator demonstrates the nature of solutions to Laplace's equation. The potential can be viewed as the vertical dimension on this floor. This is the potential. The x direction, the direction of periodicity, is that direction. And here's our sine function. This is the y direction. And here's our hyperbolic sine function. More of the x dependence and the y dependence. Lines of equal potential on our model are represented by these wires. Lines of constant altitude are the lines of equal potential. This particular one is rectangular. Here's another way to represent our potential function. This is the x direction. This is the y direction. With these clamps, we're holding the membrane down on these edges. On this edge, we're going to raise the potential. These boundaries are clamped to zero potential. Now we've raised this potential to a potential V. Under uniform tension, the membrane altitude satisfies Laplace's equation. Far from the elevated edge, the membrane then has the same shape as with the model. Rather than using wires to show the lines of equal altitude, the equal potentials, we now use backlighting. Here's what it looks like from the top. The elevated potential is uniform. Not a sine function. However, the square distribution can be represented by a Fourier series. This amounts to a superposition of solutions like the one we've seen, except they have more wiggles in the x direction and therefore decay more rapidly in the y direction. What we see is the potential if three of the walls enclosing a rectangular region are grounded, and the fourth as a uniform distribution in potential. The electric field lines are perpendicular to the equal potentials and follow paths of steepest descent. If they begin on positive charges here, they terminate on negative charges on the boundaries. A boundary that has zero potential nevertheless supports surface charges. The surface charge is proportional to the slope of the adjacent potential. This is a cross-section of the electrical system that has been pictured. These boundaries are grounded, while this one is at the potential V. If V were positive, this charge on the lower surface would be negative. In the actual experiment, a conducting box is grounded on two side surfaces and virtually grounded on the bottom surface through a small resistor R. Here's the top electrode. Its potential is determined by the oscillator. That's the top trace of the scope pattern. Here's the bottom electrode. Its potential 
is measured by the bottom trace on the scope. We'll use our solutions to Laplace's equation to find the net charge on the lower electrode. Before we make any measurements, we should put our second sidewall on the apparatus. As the lower electrode is withdrawn, its potential decreases exponentially. If B over A is small, almost all of the images are on the output electrode. But as we withdraw it, more and more of the images are on the side walls and fewer on the output electrode. According to our model, the output voltage should be proportional to the frequency. This is true if the frequency is taken from 100 hertz to 200 hertz. Remember, the upper trace is the upper driving electrode. And on a different scale, the lower one is the lower electrode voltage. However, if the frequency is taken from 1,000 hertz to 2,000 hertz, the output ceases to be linear in the frequency. With the frequency this high, the current through the output resistor is too large, too large to make the potential of the output electrode negligible. We have demonstrated how solutions to Laplace's equation that are periodic in one direction decay in the perpendicular direction.